Choosing between the N-phase microinverter system and the solar edge string inverter system is one of the biggest decisions that first time solar homeowners face. And depending upon who you ask, can be rather controversial. So which is the better solution? In this video, I'll break down the five key differences between these two systems, along with their pros and cons to help you determine which may be a better fit for your project. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll also share the updated 2025 price differences between these two systems so that you don't have to risk overpaying. If you've ever gotten solar quotes before, you've probably noticed that most companies pitch one of two inverter brands. End phase or solar edge. And given that most solar installers will only offer one of the two solutions, you'll probably find that the salespeople often market their inverter as being the superior choice, but today we'll actually uncover the facts to help you make the right decision. As somebody who has the ability to sell both of these systems and sells either of these two systems on a week in and week out basis, I'm here to help you determine which option is the better fit for your needs. The first thing to understand is that these systems function in fundamentally different ways. String inverters, like the ones offered by Solar Edge, represent the traditional approach to solar inverters. You see, with every solar project, an inverter is needed because solar panels generate power and direct current, but our homes use alternating current, AC, and so the inverter handles this required conversion process, DC to AC. For a long time, a typical system setup might include, let's just say, 20 solar panels on the roof, and within that system, the DC power generated from those panels would run down the side of the house through conduit lines into the inverter box. There, the DC power would be converted into AC, at which point it would be fed into the main service panel to power the house. And this setup worked for many years, but it came with a drawback. You can think about the panels being on the roof connected in a series similar to a daisy chain, much like how old Christmas lights used to be wired. This series, or string as we call it, typically consists of eight to 12 panels, and the combined power for the string is then sent down to the central inverter, as we discussed earlier. Now, the major drawback of the system is that if one panel underperforms, whether due to something as minor as a leaf falling on it or a technical issue, every other panel in that string is reduced to the output level of the lowest performing panel. To address this problem, microinverters entered the market in the early 2000s as a game-changing solution. Rather than relying on a single central inverter mounted on the side of the house and connecting panels and strings on the roof, microinverters assign an individual inverter to each individual solar panel. These microinverters are attached to the racking system behind each panel, therefore also providing panel level optimization and monitoring. With microinverters, the issue of one panel's performance affecting the other panel has been eliminated, boosting the overall efficiency of the system. Additionally, this approach solves another significant problem, a central point of failure. I can tell you that from all my years of working residential solar, the inverter is the most likely component to fail within a solar system and can cause the entire system to stop producing power. And this was a common frustration for homeowners with the traditional string inverter as their solar panels couldn't produce power for their home until that faulty inverter was replaced. Statistics vary, but on average and based on my experience, around 10 to 15% of string inverter systems fail in the first year, with an additional 5% failing each year going after that. For that reason, you'll find that if you ever look at negative reviews for solar companies, you'll probably come across a lot that talk about string inverters which have failed and their systems being down the whole time. Many homeowners report waiting weeks for a replacement to be ordered and reinstalled, and that leaves them the entire time without solar production, which they still have to pay for. And so, as discussed earlier, the microinverter solution introduced a significant advantage. If one inverter were to fail, which can happen occasionally, only that single panel connected to that inverter would be affected. The rest of the system would continue functioning as normal, and you would only be down that one panel with the faulty inverter, which would still need to be replaced. Another benefit of the microinverters is the enhanced visibility they provide both homeowners and installers. Each panel's performance can be monitored individually, thanks to a unique serial number which is assigned to each microinverter. These serial numbers allow for real-time communication of production data, making it easy to pinpoint issues if your system starts producing less than expected. However, there is a trade-off. With potentially 20 or 30 inverters installed on the roof, the system's installation becomes a lot more complex. Unlike string inverter setups which use DC wiring, Microinverters require AC wiring on the roof. This added complexity, along with the increased equipment requirements and co-compliance, generally leads to higher installation and equipment costs for end-phase microinverter systems compared to the traditional string inverter. Now, in 2014, a company called Solar Edge introduced an alternative system that kind of bridged the gap between the traditional central inverter and the newer microinverter solution. This system is now known as the DC optimized inverter solution. The Solar Edge system retained the simplicity of wiring and installation found in a traditional string inverter, but added a new component, optimizers. These devices are installed behind each individual panel and 
provide a panel level optimization by allowing each solar panel in the array to operate at its maximum power point, MPP, independently. This innovation eliminated the issue of one panel's underperformance affecting the others without requiring each panel to have its own inverter. As a result, it avoided the added complexity and higher costs associated with the microinverter installations. Now, like microinverters, each optimizer is equipped with a unique serial number, and so this enables homeowners and installers to monitor the system on a per panel basis, making it easy to identify and address production or performance problems. This solution quickly became popular amongst installers and remains a favorite today due to its lower installation and equipment cost, combined with the advantages of panel level optimization. However, while the issues of panel level optimization was resolved, the system still had one drawback, the central point of failure. The Solar Edge system still relies on a single inverter to ultimately convert power from DC to AC, creating a risk at any given time for the entire system to go down without production. And by the way, so far in your search for solar, which of the inverter systems have you leaned towards and why? Post your thoughts down below in the comments and I'll try to get back to you with my thoughts. Now, as I mentioned earlier, neither system is inherently better than the other and it all just depends on your specific needs. So let's break down who each system is better suited for and which factors to consider. Starting off with the solar edge string inverter system, this is typically the more cost-effective option. And as I mentioned earlier, installation times are shorter and equipment costs are lower compared to the microinverter systems. When it comes down to price, you can expect to pay about 10 to 15 cents price per watt less for Solar Edge, making it a cheaper of the two solutions. Now, not only that, Solar Edge also stands out as potentially a better choice if you plan on incorporating a large battery backup storage system into your project. Since all batteries store energy in direct current, DC, a solar edge system works seamlessly by allowing the panels to generate power in DC, which can then go directly into charging the battery without requiring an additional conversion. When it comes time to draw power from the solar edge DC coupled battery, the process is pretty straightforward. The stored DC power flows out of the battery and is then converted to AC by the inverter, making it usable for the home. This system is highly efficient. Now, with an N-phase system, however, this process looks a bit different. While the batteries still store power in DC, the N-phase system converts the power to AC immediately on the roof, well, using the microinverters, leading to what we have to refer to as the triple conversion loss. Here's how it works. The panels generate power in DC, the microinverters then on the roof convert it to AC, and then the battery has to convert that AC energy back to DC in order to store the energy. When the stored power is needed, it's converted again from DC to AC for use in the house. So as you can see, it adds an extra step in the process. Depending on the source, the average energy loss from these conversions, known as conversion loss, is about three to 4% of all of the power that's produced from the panels. This is why you'll often hear Solar Edge praised for having a higher round trip efficiency, which is accurate due to its more streamlined energy flow. This can mean that if you're going with microinverters but still want a battery, you may have to oversize your system slightly or add an extra panel or two account for the conversion loss. And while three to 4% may seem like a small number, it can really add up over the long term. And so if you're looking for a lower cost system that's optimized for battery efficiency, Solar Edge is an excellent choice and a solution that I've recommended and sold many times. On the other hand, there are key factors that can make the Enphase system a lot better, even with its slightly higher price tag. As I mentioned earlier, and if there's one thing that I hope you take away from this video, it is this. The real value of the Enphase system lies in the fact that there's not a single central point of failure. With Enphase, you're never at risk of the entire system shutting down if a central inverter on the side of your house fails. Not only that, you're also gonna have a 25 year warranty on every single microinverter as opposed to a 12 year warranty that Solar Edge offers on their single central inverter. But the main thing to take away, no single central point of failure. Well, I hope this video did give you some insights into the difference between the Enphase microinverter and Solar Edge string inverter system. If you are in the process of shopping for solar options for your house, you need to make sure that you understand the common regrets that people have after buying solar for their home. So make sure you check out my video going to the five regrets that homeowners commonly have after buying solar, which will pop up on the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.